the large fitness equipment market leader in the U.S., is going public, and you might recognize a major strategy it plans to utilize. On August 31st of 2021, iFit Health and Fitness filed its S1 document with the SEC, which is a signal that the company plans to go public. While the exact date of that IPO has not been announced yet, at least at the time of this recording, it will be traded on the NASDAQ under the appropriate ticker name iFit. Now, I want to cover the history of iFit Health and Fitness, and I'm going to go into a little bit more detail than I normally do in a section like this because I found it extremely interesting. I hope you guys will find it interesting as well, but the company has been around for quite a while. It was founded in 1977 by two Utah State University business students, and it was founded as a small import company that started selling clocks, furniture, wood-burning stoves, and what eventually would be kind of their first dabbling in fitness equipment was trampolines and mini trampolines. And the company at the time was known as Westlow Design International. In the six years from the time it was founded, Westlow Design International grew to about a $30 million annual sales rate. And this was mostly coming from those trampolines and exercise bikes. And at that point, they started to get some attention and they ended up selling off 55% of the business to a seasoned Philadelphia-based businessman. Westlow Design International continued to grow over the next five years. The company actually doubled its annual sales to around $60 million. And at this point, the company was acquired by Weeder Health and Fitness founded by the fitness icons Ben and Joe Weider. As the product line started to expand, Westlow Design International had sales just over $200 million in 1991. Two years later, the company dove into a new style of advertising called infomercials. At the time, they actually had some celebrities that they chose to use were mostly major sports athletes like baseball legend George Brett and NFL quarterbacks Roger Staubach and Steve Young. Weeder Health and Fitness were thinking about taking Westlow Design International public at the time, but decided to actually sell the company off to Bain Capital. And in 1994, Westlow Design International incorporated under a new name called Icon Health and Fitness and Bain Capital combined a few different other fitness assets like Proform products, Legend products, and American Physical Therapy. And the original two founders of Westlow Design International were still a part of the company, with Scott Watterson being the CEO and chairman of the newly formed Icon Health and Fitness, and Gary Stevenson acting as the president and chief marketing officer. By the late 90s, Icon Health and Fitness annual sales were hovering somewhere around $1 billion. And this was also the time when the company started to go out and acquire additional brands that are still a part of the portfolio today. The first one was with Nordic Track, which they picked up in bankruptcy court, and they also acquired Free Motion Fitness. In 1999, Icon Health and Fitness started to sell NordicTrack online, which was very kind of revolutionary at the time as the e-commerce share of total retail sales was only a half a percent. Even more impressive was a year later in 2000, Icon Health and Fitness launched iFit, the world's first internet-controlled fitness equipment. This technology allowed exercisers to plug in their equipment to their computer and the internet where they could log into iFit.com and select various exercise programs that would also 
adjust the speed, incline, and exercise levels, weight levels to get the best workout. So extremely innovative and revolutionary for that time. And in the 2000s, Icon Health and Fitness became the largest maker of fitness equipment. And then much of the next two decades included signing licensing deals for fitness equipment with Reebok and Gold's Gym, protecting its patents through litigation, controlling costs. They had another run-in with the Federal Trade Commission and they bought and sold the running shoe company Ultra. But the last few years, the company has been in a heated competition with Peloton. In my opinion, competition is always a good thing. It forces us to do our best because a monopoly renders people complacent and satisfied with mediocrity. And I'm not saying that Icon Health and Fitness, which recently just rebranded into iFit Health and Fitness, was being complacent or that they were satisfied with mediocrity, but the competition with Peloton definitely brought out the best in iFit Health and Fitness. Though iFit Health and Fitness started selling fitness equipment over three and a half decades before Peloton, unfortunately, Peloton quickly passed the legacy company. The history between the two companies has been sour since the beginning, as iFit claimed in a 2016 lawsuit that the Peloton founder asked to see iFit's technology in a meeting at the iFit campus in Utah in 2013, and that eventually led to Peloton copying iFit's technology. The case settled in 2017 when the two companies signed a license agreement relating to the bike technology. And while that original legal battle is over, the companies are still in a handful of of lawsuits that are ongoing at this point. iFit's CEO views the competition with Peloton as an advantage because Peloton is using the technology from iFit. iFit tends to understand where Peloton is going in the future. Now, I also wanna kind of talk about the COVID-19 effect with iFit and also just the 2020s kind of give you an update of what's happening today. When the pandemic shuttered all gyms, consumers quickly shifted to home fitness. They were buying any type of equipment from exercise bikes to treadmills to at-home streamed on-demand type of workouts. And pretty much if you sold anything in that realm of products during the last you know, 18 months or so, if you had stock, you were pretty much selling out of that stock. And iFit had a great last 18 months. They continued to roll out new products. They partnered with Planet Fitness to expand the exposure of their on-demand and live streamed fitness classes, which the library is now around 15,000 pieces of content. They extended into mindfulness under the sub-brand iFit Mind, and they added to their arsenal of over 400 patents. And from June 1st, 2020 to May 31st of 2021, so their fiscal year, iFit Health and Fitness had revenue of $1.75 billion, which was up 105% year over year. They also were able to get a $200 million investment from a private equity firm in October of 2020, which valued the company at somewhere around $7 billion. They were able to acquire Sweat, a leading digital fitness app for women in July of 2021. And then also in July of 2021, they acquired 29029, a premium ultra endurance event and community. And as the introduction mentioned, iFit is also following some of its competitors by going public. Now, the competitive landscape is not just iFit health and fitness versus Peloton. It includes an onslaught of startups, Tonal, Mir, which is owned by Lululemon, Hydro, Equinox Group, which includes Equinox Gym, Pure Yoga, Blink Fitness, Precision Run and Soul Cycle, Techno Gym, Fight Camp, Ergata, and Echelon. And honestly, I'm probably forgetting even more competitors that have a substantial amount of funding and traction. In. But if we're looking at connected fitness as a whole, it tends to come down to how well you do for things. Fitness has always been about the connection. 
But now digital connectivity has made new experiences and business opportunities possible. We are definitely still in the early stages of connected fitness, but the long-term winners will be great at the four pillars, and that is hardware, software, content, and community. And if we're looking at iFit Health and Fitness, Hardware, they are the number one provider of large fitness equipment in the United States with approximately 40% market share based on units. They offer the industry's broadest range of connected fitness hardware, including treadmills, bikes, ellipticals, rowers, climbers, strength equipment, fitness mirrors, yoga equipment, and accessories. Hardware and technology are protected by over 400 issued and pending patents. We look at software iFit's patented software biometric data is monitored and workout variables including speed, incline, resistance, and digital weight are dynamically adjusted in real time. The interactive software optimizes members' workout experience by removing the guesswork and providing personalized training. iFit Health and Fitness content, their members can access iconic fitness experiences with workouts filmed in over 50 countries across seven continents. The content is developed and led by a team of over 180 world-class trainers in more than 60 categories in eight different languages. And the community is 6.4 million members total with more than 1.5 million total fitness subscribers with members in over 120 countries. Now, as I kind of mentioned in that introduction, there is kind of this common strategy that seems to pop up with some of these recent publicly traded companies, and that is taking their community kind of ecosystem together. And the strength of the ecosystem, especially the community, can be highly leverageable into adjacent consumer categories. I've covered most of these in previous pieces of content, so you guys are going to recognize these. F45 Fitness, they acquired a supplement company called True Protein, but they also have a partnership for footwear and apparel. You have Mirror, which obviously is also selling a ton of Lululemon apparel. Peloton also just recently launched a huge line of apparel. And then the Beachbody company had created Shakeology and then also acquired another nutritional supplement company called Ladder. So why wouldn't iFit Health and Fitness use a similar strategy? And while it was only mentioned once in the S1 document, iFit will expand its proven iFit subscription services into adjacent product categories. And in August of 2020, iFit Nutrition was launched, which focuses on cookbooks, meal plans, and nutritional supplements. Now, on the surface, the nutritional supplement product lineup is fairly simple. They have meal replacements, protein powders, which come in whey and plant, a BCAA plus, which comes in caffeinated and non-caffeinated, and a hydration plus product. That being said, iFit Health and Fitness has an innovation mindset. It's been pervasive in the organization for decades, and this can be found in their Hydration Plus Infusion Kit. The Hydration Plus vessel uses hydration-boosting elixirs that infuse your water with flavor and electrolytes as you drink. There's a dial in the lid that adjusts flavor intensity to your preference and can switch to pure water. This easy-to-use hydration system was designed to help you increase your water intake. The cap is also universal to many of the leading water bottles on the market. Now, talking about ecosystems and maybe what's starting to happen in the American consumer market, a lot of brands, a lot of companies are focusing on that ecosystem, building up that value so there is a larger switching cost associated with consumers. But... Even the strongest ones have to face the reality of today's American consumer market. Fact is, the consumer has the power because there's endless substitutes in every single product or service category on the market. This is creating a new trend within the connected fitness industry where a consumer is utilizing maybe one piece of the ecosystem, so like a piece of fitness equipment and taking that and utilizing a different piece of another ecosystem, so the content from a competitor. And this is the same thing that you can see across a number of kind of platform, functional CPG type categories, kind of going along with the theme of nutritional supplements that was mentioned earlier. 
A lot of the consumers are also purchasing maybe a pre-workout from one company and a post-workout from another company. Even though that one company might create those products in a synergistic way, the consumer has the control. They control the desired supplementation effect and how they want to feel it. But I just want to end on some final thoughts. iFit's fitness program has grown at 81% compounded annual growth rate over the last four years. Combine that with the fact that they have the largest breadth of connected fitness equipment on the market. The IPO will provide them with a ton of new funds that they can continue to internally innovate with or look for opportunistic acquisitions. iFit should be a long-term winner in the ultra competitive connected fitness space. I hope you guys enjoyed this piece of content. If you have any questions about iFit health and fitness or just the overall connected fitness industry, please leave a comment on this content or reach out to me on any of my social media accounts.